Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Nihongo Master Podcast. And I'm your host Azra, for the final time. Because this is the very last episode that I'll be hosting on the podcast. It's going to be an emotional couple of minutes for me, and I hope you listen to the end of this episode for a special message from yours truly. But for now, for one last time, let's chat about this episode's topic, what not to do in Japanese summer. I've had a few Japanese summers, and I thought, for my final episode, I'd do one that comes from the heart and experience. Loads of guides online will tell you what you shouldn't miss and what you must do when you travel to Japan during the summer, but today I'll highlight five things you shouldn't do instead. But before we get into it, I have a treat for you listeners. If you don't already know, Nihongo Master is an interactive online Japanese language learning system where we provide Japanese lessons in a fun and easy manga style way. The podcast has a special unique 50% off promo code for your entire subscription of our program that I'll drop sometime in the next few minutes, so keep your ears tuned for that. First and foremost on the list of not to do is choosing inappropriate clothing. Now, inappropriate can be a lot of things, depending on what the context is. I'll talk about two situations. The first one is being the extreme hot and humid weather, or tenki in Japanese. If you have been religiously tuning into the season, you'd know that Japanese, natsu, summer, is brutal. I was born and raised in a tropical country, but I've never experienced a more torturous summer than in Japan. But hey, that's just my opinion. And Japanese summer is still extremely lovely. One of the most important ways for me to enjoy this season is by appropriately dressing for the weather. That means cotton and linen, everything. No polyester, no pleather, no chunky boots. I know some of us would like to sacrifice comfort for fashion within the fashion city Tokyo, but that's got to be the number one thing you should not do. Instead, go for lightweight clothing pieces that are cooling and breezy. On that note though, inappropriate fuku, to mean clothing, can also be in the sense of modesty. Japan is still a relatively conservative society, and most women prefer to not have their shoulders bare and skirts go down past their knees. And as I've mentioned before as well, sure, you can go in a tank top and shorts all around Japan, but I highly recommend to have a nice cover-up so as to blend in a little bit more. Now, I won't go on and on about this, but tune in to Season 13, Episode 5 if you want to know more. Long story short, regardless if it's for the weather or modesty, choosing inappropriate clothing for a Japanese summer trip is a no-no. Here's a quick vocab recap. Tenki, weather, natsu. Summer. Fuku. Clothing. Number two on our list of things not to do is wearing uncomfortable footwear. This kind of ties into what I was talking about sacrificing comfort for fashion. When I first came to Japan, I was so excited to try all these new fashion styles and spread my wings a bit more. I mean, if I can't experiment in Japan, where else can I? Am I right, fashionistas? But trust me, if you wear uncomfortable footwear on the trip, you might find yourself with more blisters than toes. There's a lot of walking in Japan, regardless of which city you go to. Sure, the public transport is extremely convenient and well-connected, but it's not going to get you door-to-door, is it? In major cities like Osaka and Tokyo, you're going to be walking quite a bit. And, And in scenic cities like Kyoto, I mean, is it the best way to explore places by walking? So with that said, when you pack for Japan, be sure to grab a couple of comfortable kutsu to be in shoes. Oh, and also chuck in a couple of comfy sandals as well to give your feet a breather in the summer heat, or netsu in Japanese. Forget with the platform boots, heels, and all that uncomfortable stuff. You can strut down the runway when it's time for that. Exploring the land of the rising sun is way more crucial and that requires a bit of walking. But if you insist, I guess I can't stop you. Pack a couple of kutsushita socks so that when your feet do get all bruised up, you can pat the bruises with some socks. Now, for a quick vocab recap. Kutsu, shoes. Netsu, heat. Kutsushita, socks. By the way, if you haven't checked out our official website yet, why not give it a browse? And Nihongo Master... We offer efficient Japanese lessons that are quick, easy, and fun for Japanese language learners of all levels, from beginners to advanced. 
our smart tools will assist you in areas where you need a little bit of a push and congratulate you on the ones you waste. With a community of over 50,000 Japanese students, you're not alone on your learning journey. Make new friends and improve together with our point system, collecting points as you go along. Ask away any questions you have on our group discussion pages. There's sure to be others as well as our Japanese instructors that are quick to answer. You can also take Nihongo Master with you on the go and learn Japanese as you trot the globe. Practical, right? Plug in our podcast exclusive quote for the season, Japan Summer, J A P A N S U M M E R, for 50% off your entire subscription for as long as you're with us. You'll be able to learn Japanese at any time of the day, anywhere in the world, for just $10 a month. Now, speaking of packing, that brings me to my third point. Do not pack too much. Oh, I am so guilty of this every time. I mean, can I really leave my 10 pairs of trousers at home for this amazing trip? The answer is yes. Every time, yes. Maybe we're all a bit rusty when it comes to packing. Since it's been about two years since some of us have gotten on a plane. Maybe more for others. So, we might be a bit more cautious when it comes to packing. And in the end, packing too much. I personally think this is a no-go. Because whether or not this is your first time in Japan, this country is amazing for shopping. Boys and girls alike, you guys will be able to resist the shopping culture here. Quality, quantity, and price ranges for everyone. If you pack way too much in your suitcase and reaching the weight limit on your way to Japan, how are you going to bring all of that kaimono, shopping, stuff back? Buy additional luggage allowance? Sure, you can do that, but depending on the airline you go with, that might be costly. Plus, wouldn't you rather spend that money on shopping? So, to solve all of those problems, just pack lighter. Pack only the necessities, and anything additional can just be bought in Japan. I'll have you know that shopping in Japan is extremely benri, convenient. Check out Season 4, Episode 10 for a virtual Japanese shopping spree. Now, the bottom line is, make sure your luggage, or nimotsu in Japanese, is about half full. The other half is reserved for shopping. Now, here's a quick vocab recap. Kaimono, shopping. Benri, convenient. Nimotsu, luggage. Moving on to the fourth on our list of what not to do in Japanese summer is planning your schedule too much. For some of us, this is the ultimate summer holiday. I get it. You want to get a lot done in the short period of time you're in Japan. Of course, no one is blaming you for that. And there's nothing wrong with that either. But here's the thing. There's such a thing as planning too much. Especially since the summer can be quite hot and mushiatsui, humid, you might not want to plan too many outdoor activities on your trip. In fact, too much katsudo activity can be too exhausting. Whenever I'm in Japan during the summer, I try to plan outdoor activities in the morning when it's the coolest in the day and stay indoors for most of the afternoon. Because it can get quite warm, it sometimes affects my mood and enjoyment of these activities. Oh, and one other thing. Take note of the rainy season. Tsuyu in Japanese. If you're in Japan during this time and you have outdoor activities planned, they might get interrupted by heavy downpour and even taifu, typhoon. Now, for a quick vocab recap. Mushiatsui, humid. Tsuyu, rainy season. Taifu, typhoon. Katsudo, activity. And last but not least, the thing you should definitely not do in Japanese summer is... Drum roll please! Not staying hydrated. Yep, this is the most common and biggest sin of them all. I never really had an issue with dehydration before. Until I came to Japan. Yes, Japan has been a big eye-opening experience for me. As soon as I step out the door, I'm drenched in sweat. And if I'm out the whole day, I'm constantly sweating. And if we don't constantly replenish ourselves, how else are we going to gain back the water we lost? Dehydration in Japanese is dasui. And a couple of times I've had that. It comes with a bad zutsu headache as well that never really goes away. Nowadays, I always have a bottle of water in hand whenever I'm out and about in summer. And for those of us who are big on drinking, alcohol does dehydrate you as well, you know. 
And of course, drinking culture in Japan is amazing too. You can't possibly resist a good umeshu or chuhai. But alas, namabiru, draft beer, is not the best way to stay hydrated, even though we wish it was. So, whether or not you're drinking during your time in Japan, stay hydrated. We're all here for a good time, and a bottle of water in hand is not much to ask for when we get good results for it. Now, on to our last vocab recap. Dasui, dehydration. Sutsu, headache. You can also say, atamaga itai. Namabiru, draft beer. Umeshu, plum wine. Chuhai, an alcoholic Japanese can drink. So, I hope you guys remember these five don't do's in Japan. If not, revisit this episode before your Japanese summer trip. I've got you covered. Now, is there anything else you think we shouldn't be doing in Japanese summer? Tell us your thoughts by commenting on our social media platforms. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Also, head over to the Nihongo Master blog if you're interested in reading up on topics like these some more. And if you're keen on paying up some more Japanese for yourself, pop onto our official website. Nihongomaster.com to learn more. While you're at it, why not get yourself a subscription? Get a head start on your Nihongo journey with Nihongo Master. Now, if you missed the promo code earlier on, we'll say it again now. Plug in Japan Summer, J A P A N S U M M E R, at checkout to get 50% off your subscription forever. Yep, your monthly or yearly subscription is half off using this podcast exclusive code. So go on, sign up now. And thank you so much for listening to me in this season finale. I appreciate every single one of you for tuning in regularly and supporting this podcast, which wouldn't have happened without you listeners. Both old and new listeners, I sincerely appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. As I mentioned, this will be my last episode as your host. I'm so sad to be leaving this podcast, but I'm not going empty handed. I leave you with 13 seasons of Japanese culture and language content hosted by yours truly. And dozens of blog posts on the official website. Also, I would love for you to find me on my Instagram, Azra Shakira, A Z R A S Y A K I R A H. Come say hi, I'd love to interact with all of you. And with that, for the final time, sayonara. <laughs>